All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our next unit, Waves in Simple Harmonic Motion. Uh, again, this is Mr. Geiselman here working with Mr. Oleg in second trimester to get some of our uh, distance learning videos done. So today we're gonna start our new unit on Waves and Simple Harmonic Motion. Uh, what we're gonna be going over today is a couple things about waves. Specifically, we're gonna look at determining the speed of a wave how fast it's traveling, and then describing the differences between the, our two types of waves, the transverse wave and the longitudinal wave. Along the way, we're also going to be looking at some wave terminology and trying to determine some different characteristics about these waves. So what is a wave? A wave, in short, is an oscillation, and that means an up and down, side to side motion, a complete cycle that passes energy through matter. Right. A lot of times we just call that matter um, a medium, whether it's water, uh, a gas or a solid or that oscillation. That wave can be passed through space. We are looking at specifically the transfer of energy and not matter. So when waves pass through something, the energy is passing through the medium, whether it's a, a gas, a liquid, or a solid, or even if it's empty space, the energy is passing, but there is no matter passing. You can think about this like water waves, sound, light, earthquakes. Those are all good examples of waves. And if you've ever been in the water and a boat comes by, you bob up and down as the waves hit you, but you are not going with the waves. Uh, when we look at waves, there's a few terms that we absolutely need to understand. The first is the wavelength, and this is the distance from one point on a wave to the same point on the next cycle. So we'll talk about period on the next slide, but a wavelength is from the top, what we call the crest of a wave to the crest of a wave, or the trough of a wave to the trough of a wave. We are looking at the wave being a cycle where it starts, goes through the process and comes back to that very same point. And the wavelength is the distance from one point on one wave to the next point, or the, sorry, the same point on the next wave. Uh, the next piece then is frequency. Frequency means how frequently a wave will actually oscillate. So how many complete wavelengths travel in one second? And that one second is very important. And then finally, speed of a wave is determined is how fast the wave is actually traveling. So different types of waves will travel at different speeds, uh, depending on the medium, uh, whether it's space, solids, liquids, gases, waves are going to travel at different speeds. So we'll take a look at some of those later on. Some more things, just a little bit more on period and frequency. Period is the time required for one complete cycle. So we usually measure this in seconds. If it takes the wave one second to do one cycle, we would say it has a period of one because we take the seconds required for one complete cycle to occur, all right, and divide by how many cycles occurred in that time frame. If three cycles occurred in two seconds, we take two divided by three, that would give us our period. Frequency is kind of the inverse of that. Frequency is the amount of cycles completed per second this is what we measure in hertz, and hertz might be a term that you have heard before. So the frequency is equal to how many seconds, or excuse me, how many cycles occur in every second. So if we have five cycles occur in one second, our frequency would be five hertz. All right, so that is frequency, how many cycles occur per second. When we look at this, we'll need both of these to determine wave speed later on. We abbreviate time with the lowercase t, and remember that uh, time is, or period, excuse me, is one cycle per divided by the frequency. So how many cycles occur per second? Excuse me, how many seconds per occur per cycle? All right, and then frequency, we kind of give the italicized lowercase f2 and one cycle per that time period will give us our frequency. So these two work together. Remember, frequency is how many cycles fit per second. 
And then time is how one cycle divided by how long or how many, what our frequency is going to be. All right. Amplitude is one thing that we're going to look at here in a second is the size of the cycle. So how far the object, in this case, the wave moves from the equilibrium point, which we would call the resting or the natural spot. So if we look at waves, even down here on the bottom, we have a wave with an amplitude, right? That goes top to bottom. And this middle line would be our resting point or our equilibrium. And we can see it here. So the wavelength is how far from one point on the wave to that same point on the next cycle. We can measure it from the crest, which is at the top of the wave, or at the trough, which is at the bottom of the wave. We can measure anywhere along this because it's all going to be the same. One wavelength is going to be equal to one period as well. The amplitude is that distance from that resting equilibrium point right here on the graph at zero to the crest. That is very important that we understand that is from the resting equilibrium point to the crest. So wavelength is one point on one cycle to the next point or that same point on the next cycle. There are two types of waves that we're going to be looking at. The first is a transverse wave, and this is the type of wave where the oscillation or the motion is perpendicular to the uh, to the direction the wave moves. So water and light move in this direction. This is an example of a transverse wave. The wave motion is going to be up and down, but the energy from the wave is going to be moving left to right. So the motion of the wave is up and down, but the energy of the wave will be left and right. That is a transverse wave. Here, the motion all right, of the energy is going left to right down the slinky, but the motion of the wave is going up and down on the slinky. So again, transverse waves, the motion goes up and down, and the energy travels right to left. So the energy is perpendicular or at a 90 degree angle to the motion of the wave. The other type is the longitudinal wave, and this one's a little bit different. This is the type of wave where the oscillations are moving in the same direction of the sound or of the wave. So example of this are sound waves. When we look at these, we're going to have areas where if we push on a slinky, because then the motion of the slinky will be going left to right and the motion of the energy will be going left to right. We are going to have areas of compression and rarefaction, rarefaction, excuse me, where at compression, the wave forces the slinky or the medium, in this case, the slinky is the medium to compress. And behind that area will be this area of uh, where it spreads out, rarefaction is where it becomes less dense. And that's going to be this area where the medium, in this case, the slinky, is spread out. All right? And compressions, it's exactly what it sounds like, where the particles in the medium squeeze together. And rarefactions are the areas in the particle where they are more spread, spread apart. They occur after a compression. And again, a wavelength occurs from one point on the wave to the same point on the next cycle. So we would go from compression to the next compression, and that would be a wavelength on a longitudinal wave. Wave speed is, again, how fast the wave is traveling from point to point. And the wave speed is calculated by this equation. Wave speed equals the frequency of the wave times the wavelength. So if we look at it, we use a couple of different variables. V is used to determine the wave speed. We look at, or excuse me, represent the wave speed. Wave speed is measured in meters per second. We're also going to, going to use frequency. Remember, frequency is in hertz, and that's how many cycles occur per second. So if five cycles occur in one second, our frequency would be five hertz. 
And then finally, we have the Greek letter lambda to represent wavelength. And that is how far it is from one point on the first cycle to the same point on the next cycle. So wavelength is represented by this kind of upside down looking Y. And that is the uh, Greek letter lambda. So that's what we're going to use for that. So your job right now is to calculate the wave speed of a water wave with a wavelength of 1.5 meters and a frequency of 3 hertz. As we complete this one, uh, uh, what we would need to do is use that equation V equals F times lambda, and we would get 3 times 1.5, 3 hertz times 1.5 meters will give us a velocity of 4.5 meters per second. So again, 3 hertz times 1.5 meters equals 4.5 meters per second. And that's our answer. Our next practice problem, we're going to calculate the wavelength of a slinky wave with a wave speed of 2.5 meters at a frequency of three, or excuse me, seven hertz, All right? So calculate this answer. So as we look at this answer, we are gonna use that same V equals F times lambda equation. We'll get 2.5 meters per second. equals seven hertz times lambda. To get lambda all by itself, we need to divide both sides by seven hertz. And when we take 2.5 meters per second divided by seven, not 7.5, 7 hertz, we get an answer of 0 0.35 meters, because that's how long our wavelength is, 0 0.35 meters. I apologize for the sloppy penmanship, but it's a little bit difficult on the computer. So... When we look ahead, uh, that about does it for today. So hopefully that wasn't too much for day one. But remember, to by the end of this lesson, you should be able to calculate wave speed. That is something that we should be able to do. All right. And then we should also know that a longitudinal and a transverse wave are different. A longitudinal wave, the energy and the oscillations are traveling in the same direction. In a transverse wave, the oscillations and the energy are transferring, or excuse me, moving in perpendicular directions, where the transverse wave will move up and down, and the energy will move right to left. If you have any questions, please let me or Mr. Oleg know. Otherwise, have a fantastic day, everybody.